Today's quiz involves a bimetallic strip. Notice a brass surface and it looks like an iron or a steel surface and they are riveted together. You can see these little rivets. Our question for today is if I took this bimetallic strip and I heated it, what would happen? Here's what your quiz looks like. I'll hold that up now. As always, either draw or write out your answer and then mark your level of confidence. Typical student responses include, first of all, it's not going to do anything. Metal is metal. When I heat metal, which we see all the time on a stove, nothing happens to it. Others will say, I know metals expand at different rates. It seems to me that it it's already kind of curved. It'll probably curve more when it's heated. So those are our two normal responses. I have some matches and I have a Bunsen burner. We're gonna actually heat this up. I have a robust flame. I'm going to take and first of all show you that it is a little bit curved to begin with. I'm now going to put it on this flame and I might have to speed this up because I'll really get this hot. All right, you could see that very little has happened. Some of the students would be very disappointed. They'd say, look, I know this is supposed to bend. Metals of unequal thermal expansion will end up expanding at different rates. One has to curve the other in order to get a greater length on the outside to the shorter length on the inside. The real question is, why are we seeing very little effect? Let's go ahead and analyze this. I'm gonna bring this around. I have this focused in front of you, and you can see if I turn it to the side, well, that doesn't show up very well, so let me explain here what's happening. This is very hot, so I don't want to touch it, but each one of these uh, pieces of metal in between the rivets are bulging out. So in other words, this is popping out, popping out, popping out, instead of curving uh, the metal in one way versus the other. Now that I've got this cooled, it does tend to bend a little bit, but again, what's happened is there's a deformation on each one of these panels, if you would like to call it a panel, um, so it's popping out instead of having the rigidity to cause this entire thing to bend. So this is a matter of scale. If I were to take a smaller or thinner bimetallic strip where we have uh, brass on one side and iron on the other, and they're fused together and they're very thin and these bend with ease. Now, if I take and put this under a flame or into the flame, we should see a dramatic effect. And you could see it bend and curl very, very quickly. And as it cools, it will straighten back out. So it's a matter of scale in this particular case. This metal is just too thick. It's too hard to bend that thick metal. And again, we end up with this popping problem. This has real applications all around us, these bimetallic strips. Now, if you have something thicker, you don't see as much of an effect as if it's thinner. You can already see this beginning to straighten out. So one of the things that I want to show you is what's called a thermostat, something that we use in automobiles all the time. We take this over, I have an engine here, and we can talk about that.
I have an engine here. This is the engine that used to drive me to school here. When it was done, I pulled it out and I cut out the cylinder walls. So you can see how it operates. That'll be for another video. Essentially what we have though, is pistons that go up and down in the cylinders. They're all made of different materials. The engine block is made of cast. The head is made of aluminum. The pistons themselves are aluminum. The rods, forged steel, and then the rings are spring steel. All of these are gonna expand at different rates as they heat. That becomes a problem. We saw earlier that when you have two dissimilar metals and they're expanding at different rates, you can get cracks, you can get bulges, you can end up getting bends and twists. All of that's gonna be a real problem for a precision instrument like an engine. In the north, which I live, it gets very cold. It's very cold outside now. If our pistons are made of aluminum and that, those aluminum molecules are barely vibrating, they're really small, as small as they're ever gonna be. As you start an engine, it's gonna start warming up. All of these are gonna be expanding at different rates. That's what engineers have to contend with. And we know that really bad things can happen when they have dissimilar thermal expansion rates. So engineers have to take this into account. And none of this would be possible without the thermostat that we showed. Here I have a bimetallic, uh, it's actually a pretty long piece of, of rod, but we coil together. That's what that little coil is. This is gonna operate to help cool the engine. There are water jackets in between the cylinders and the outside. I have a massive water pump right here. This water pump is connected to the timing belt. Down here, I've got a massive hose that's gonna take all of the water that gets pushed through this engine out to a radiator, which is gonna take all of that excess of heat. And there's a lot because these are rather inefficient. Right inside here, actually on the back side. Let me reposition the engine and show you. Give me a minute. Right down here, I'll have my thermostat. This is the water pump pumping the water through this too. This uh, thermostat simply fits in here. What's gonna happen is if the engine is cold, I don't wanna take the water that's inside the engine and take it to the radiator to cool it even more. I need this up at operating temperature. That's what engineers want, a single consistent operating temperature. In order to get this to uh, warm up this engine, we'll have a little bypass valve here. In other words, this thermostat is gonna be closed. It's gonna keep circulating the little bit of water that's inside the engine jackets around itself till it warms up. Once it warms up, we'll end up getting this bimetallic strip to open up this center there's a little rubber O-ring. This outer O-ring is to keep it sealed so it doesn't leak, but there's an inner O-ring connected to this, almost looking like a spring bimetallic strip. When it gets warm, it simply expands or contracts, however uh, they've designed this, and that allows this hose to now take the water to the radiator, bringing it back and cooling the engine sufficiently. You don't wanna overcool the engine because that would be a problem. So this is gonna constantly open and close to keep this temperature at operating temperature. One last thing I'd like to say, if you like your engine and you want it to last a long time, here's what you need to think about. Your thermostat is there for a reason. You wanna get the temperature up to operating temperature as quickly as possible. But before it's at operating temperature, do not lug the engine or rev it too high or do anything that puts a huge load on it. When you start your car, let it run for five or 10 seconds, get the oil all around, and then drive it gently until it warms up. Watch the temperature gauge on your dashboard. Once it's in operating temperature, now it's ready to go. And you can you know, give it full throttle if you'd like. But before that, you really shouldn't. I'm boiling some water here, actually heating it up, not boiling yet. Here's our thermostat. I'm gonna bring it around and see if I can get a close up. You'll notice that there's a rubber seal around the outside. Here's our bimetallic coil that is gonna end up expanding or contracting. And there's another rubble, rubber seal in here. We can flip it around here. So when this is gonna to get to an operating temperature, 
this is either going to expand or contract, causing that to open or close. I'm going to put that in this water. We should be able to see it open and close. You can now see it's fully open, and that is how your engine is going to be cooled. All right, our thermostat is, well, it's still a little bit warm, uh, but now it's cool, and you could see it's fully sealed. So if the radiator is doing a better job uh, than it needs to, it'll close back up, and it'll oscillate on and off to keep your engine running exactly at the temperature that the engineers have specified. So that's your quiz for today.